Annyeong. Tell me about yourself. My name is Bagya and I've been running this channel I Korean News since October 9th, 2022. Actually, October 9th is Hangul Nal, a Korean national holiday. Back in 1446, King Sejong the Great created the Korean alphabet for his people and called it Hunmin Jeongum. You might still hear this name today like Hunmin Jeongum game where you can't use any foreign language. Fast forward to 1926, 480 years after proclamation, Korean language scholars decided to celebrate it. They initially named the event Kagyanar by combining first two letters you learn in the Korean alphabet system. Yes, that's where my name comes from. And two years later, they renamed Kagyanar as Hangulnar and we've been calling the Korean alphabet Hangul ever since. Are you a teacher by any chance? No, 선생님 아니에요. Do you have any background in teaching or learning the Korean language? I studied in the States for a year as an exchange student and volunteered as a Korean teacher for one semester. Well, I'm not sure whether you noticed or not, but I've never explicitly said I'm gonna teach you something. That's because I wanted to be your Korean friend casually sharing what I know. However, some of you started calling me a teacher and I felt a sense of responsibility because not anyone can be called a teacher. So, I began taking courses to obtain a Korean teaching license. It's not because I want to work in a Korean institute, but because I didn't want to become a random unqualified person who's called a teacher. So, I really want to say thank you so much for letting me want to become a better version of myself. What language do you speak aside from Korean and English? Do you use your translation skills in other jobs? I used to work in a multinational company in Korea, so I have to write some reports both in English and Korean. What is your day job? To be honest, I'm taking a break at the moment. I've lived a pretty hectic life and I decided to pause everything to find out what I really want to do. Anyway, these days I've been learning many different things and doing YouTube. What inspired you to start this channel and specifically teach with Going17? I've always wanted to start a YouTube channel, but I figured I should do something that's not just about me. It's not that I'm a super altruistic person, but I've noticed I'm more motivated when there's a purpose beyond myself. So I considered creating language-related videos as a way to contribute with my skills. But you know, there's already so much great stuff out there, so I wasn't sure if I can bring something new. Then, in August 2022, I stumbled upon the article that Seventy partnered up with UNESCO for this Going Together campaign. And at the very moment I read it, I decided to make videos that help people learn Korean from Going 17, starting off from Hangul Day. How do you choose which words you'll be discussing in a video? I have some criteria like pick one to two from popular scenes, something with multiple meanings, something as homonyms or synonyms, something that can be lost in translation easily, and something fun. Do you immediately remember the Going 17 episodes in which the members have said the word once you've made your choice? Mostly, yes, but it still depends. I can immediately think of which clips to use for about 70%, but for the remaining 30%, I have to search through tons of videos to find proper examples. How do you find clips for the words you want to teach? To answer this, I'll share my process when a new video is released. On the day it comes out, I watch it at least three times. The first time, I watch it without captions. Then, for the second video, I turn on the English captions. Lastly, for the third time, I watch while pausing to note down timestamps. And when I'm searching for the clips I need, I refer to this document. How long does it usually take you to make a video? Now it takes about three to four days. What has been your favorite part about making videos? For individual videos, it's finding fun clips because I love transforming goofy moments into something informative. On a broader scale, my favorite aspect in general is the sense of fulfillment. I feel like it's an advanced puzzle because I rely on my memory to locate the pieces and decide where each one fits. Well, it's challenging, but it's really rewarding at the same time. In what year did you get into 17? It was around early 2022. What made you interested in them? Their songs or their personalities? Both. Actually, my younger sister was the one who introduced me to Going 17, and she even gave me the list of songs that I had to listen to. What's more, she even made me watch their performances, but the thing is, I loved everything she recommended. I adore their chemistry, personalities, songs, performances,
performances and everything. Do you have a favorite Going 17 episode? My favorite episode is hands down Pumili outing number three. Well, there are a lot of funny ones, but this is the only episode that had me laughing so hard that I ended up whipping. Do you have a bias or biases in 17? There's a saying in Korean, if you bite all 10 fingers, it hurts every single one. Everyone is dear to me. I can't choose one or a few. I just can't. Do you have favorite 17 songs? There are so many, but this morning I listened to Together, To You, and Ima. And also, I love their unique songs as well, like Dust, Back It Up, and Pang. Will you put your videos on hold if Going 17 takes a break? No, I don't want to. So, I'm actually working on a new content called Lyric Sync. Let's get immersed in the lyrics together. This series will not just focus on 17, but also songs from various artists. Spoiler alert! Next week, I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite songs I mentioned earlier. Anyway, I hope this video resolves your curiosity. Hello, my learning Korean. 고마워요.